Awesome. All right. Um, I'm going to have you slate your name, your outlet, and then I will remind you when it's your last question. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Hi, you, guys. Oh, sorry. Just slate your name and outlet first, please. Okay. Dana Abercrombie, the coalition. Hi, Dana. Hi, Hi guys. It's a pleasure to speak to you. Hello. Yeah, Dana, I don't, can you hear us? I don't hear oh. Dana very well. I don't know if she. I can't either. Can you hear me? All right. Try. Okay. Go ahead, Dana. Okay. Um. Thank you so much for speaking to me. The show is fantastic. I was wondering, what was it? I know there's a lot of things that inspired you know, the show coming to life, but what would you say would have been the driving force? He'll do this, yeah, the He'll driving do. force. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at her. Yeah, exactly. She's right there, that little 13 year old so warrior. <laughs> Excellent. Well, for Hildy, I have to wonder, what keeps you going? What keeps you motivated? Just the love of the truth. And I really have, um, I think I have a lot of natural drive to get to the truth, to the people, which is what reporting is all about for me. Mm -hmm. Right. So when they came to you and said that they wanted this to be made in TV show, uh, was there any kind of a drawback? That, how did you feel? Um, well, no, not really, because after I met with Joy and Dana and Dara, they're both such strong women. And one thing I really didn't want was it to portray a weak female character. And I right. knew that even if absolutely no one watched the show, it was going to be amazing. Aww. Aww. Um, so also overall, I was wondering, guys, what would you say... I know there's a lot to this story, but what was it about this story in particular, aside from like the age and everything, that was like, this has to be made into a TV show? Um, well, when I first saw Hildy, um, which was four years ago, so she was nine, um, you know, this little girl got up on stage and at the Tribeca Film Festival, they gave her an award for, um, you know, having having scooped the murder and for having you know fought the haters on the internet and, mm -hmm. and sticking up for her own right to tell the truth and I just couldn't believe that a nine-year-old had this resilience and this um like clear sense of self and clear sense of what was important and and that she had to tell the truth and to me, that was a character who you want to live with for a long time, for a few years. This was a child that I wanted to watch grow up. And so when I called Dana Fox and then Dara about it, you know. Oh. Anyway, she she called us and she really wanted to, to oh, there, you're back, Joy, go ahead. Oh. You know, I really felt like one of the reasons it was a TV show was because you want to watch this child grow up. You want to, um, you want to, you want to live with this character for a long time. You don't want it to be one trick or one story. Like Hildy just scooped a murder and then she joined the cheerleading squad. This is a <laughs> person who cares deeply about reporting and cares deeply about the truth. And I want, I want to watch that that character grow right so can you talk about the balance between this is an adapt this is an inspired by a true story and and also from facts and also trying to pull in that creative narrative as well where does the balance lie in between the two well there were i mean there were actually frankly a lot of um legal reasons that we couldn't tell yeah. the exact story um hildy had caused quite a bit of trouble in in sealand's grove pennsylvania <laughs> um and and so we really did sort of need to take it out of there and move it across the country and take the essence the emotional essence of who she is and who she is with her father and that yeah. incredible peer-to-peer -peer relationship, and then place it in a story that, you know, certainly has some shades of 
the stories that we all heard in the 80s about kids who went missing. I mean, that, the, the whole milk carton era. Um, so we, you know, we were trying to create something that would be bingeable and compelling and not get us sued. Um, and also <laughs> stayed emotionally true to who Hildy and Matt are. Exactly. What I love the most is the relationship between the daughter and the father. Um, can you guys talk, what was that like also for you, Hildy, seeing that on screen and for you guys, what was it like to, to build that relationship? Was it through a lot of interviews? Was it through research? Because it comes across as very natural. We spent so much time talking to Hildy and Matt and the whole family, and they were incredibly generous to let us into their lives with open arms. Um, and one of the things that, that came to us pretty early on, which I don't even know is something that they said, was we were listening to the story of some of the, Matt had gotten very disillusioned with the news in New York and felt like a lot of things were becoming clickbait. And he ended up moving his entire family to Sealand's Grove, Pennsylvania and stopped reporting, which to me felt a lot, that was me putting it on him, but it felt a lot like depression. It felt like something that he had almost been through trauma. And then when she started reporting, she brought him out of that and brought him back to life. Um, and so it, it was very easy for us to come up with a story to build around that. And one of the things that Matt said, and I don't, Hildy, I'm curious to hear how you feel about this too. Um, Matt said that that was very true to life, that, that seeing her do the purest version of the thing that he had once fallen in love with mm -hmm. became his North Star. Yeah. Also, I, we were really fascinated by, especially as we were all just becoming parents at that time, we were so fascinated by the respect with which Matt and Bridget raised their children. Um, there's no helicopter parenting in that family. You know, <laughs> the kids are, you know, Hildy was allowed to ride a bike around town at seven years old. And, you know, they, they were treating their kids like human beings who have the right to have interests and opinions um, rather than like carting them around to every single soccer game, like a lot of American kids. And we were very inspired by just how they talk to each other. I mean, Matt and Hildy actually act like Woodward and Bernstein. Like they actually, you know, say, come on, that's bad reporting, Hildy, you know, and they act like partners. <laughs> they act like work partners. And it's a beautiful thing to see because it's a kind of parenting that I think you don't see very often. Right. So lastly, I was wondering for Hildy, Last there are a lot of people. Last, there's, a, there's a lot of people, especially of all ages, especially older as well, who does not have your kind of strength that you have. Is there any kind of advice that you have for people to still keep going in whatever field it is that they're passionate about? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of cliche to say this, but um, if you really work hard at something, then, um, then it can come true. And it doesn't really matter your age or your gender or anything like that, which I which I think is the message that Home Before Dark is spreading, which I'm so grateful for. All right. Thank you guys for speaking with me. Thank, Thank you. you.